I accidentally married a stranger in Vegas, part two. I stood there staring at him. I don't even remember how many Mississippis passed before his voice broke me out of it. Um, do I know you? He asked, looking uncomfortable. Is there something you need? Of course I knew him. What kind of stupid question was it? He was Colin, my Colin, standing right in front of me, looking exactly the same as before the accident. Same messy black hair, same dark eyes, but there was nothing in his face that said he knew me. Not a flicker of recognition. I opened my mouth to speak, then shut it again. What was I even supposed to say? I couldn't exactly tell him the truth. Hey, I'm your husband, the one who made you forget everything. I wish I had listened to him that day. Flashback, two weeks ago. It was late, way too late for us to even be out of our house, but the night had been incredible. Colin had just gotten the promotion he'd worked to the bones for, and we were out celebrating. We had the time of our lives and everything felt perfect, maybe too perfect. I had a couple of drinks, maybe a few too many, but I felt fine, invincible even. You sure you're okay to drive? Colin asked as we left the restaurant, his arm around my waist, steadying me more than he probably realized. I grinned at him, jangling the car keys. I'm fine, babe. It's not far. I got this. Colin gave me a doubtful look. You sure? Our anniversary is in a week. I'd rather not spend it in the hospital. Relax, I said laughing while opening the car door. Safest driver ever. We'll be home in no time. He didn't push it, just slid into the passenger seat with a sigh. We pulled out of the parking lot, and for a while, it was smooth sailing. The streets were quiet, and Colin was humming softly, talking about his plans for work, for us, for our future. I kept nodding along, though my mind was wandering. A week until our eighth anniversary, and everything left like a dream. I glanced over at him, his face glowing in the dim light of the dashboard. God, I loved him. Eight years of marriage, and I still couldn't believe we had made it this far. I reached out, grabbing his hand for a second. You know I love you, right? I said, glancing back at the road. He squeezed my hand, smiling. You better after all these years. I chuckled, not believing my reality, when his face suddenly shone brighter. There was a car rushing directly at us. Uh, August? Colin said, sitting up straighter. I squinted, trying to get my bearings. I tried to curve sharply, and I was going too fast. I tried to slow down, but the car skidded on the slick pavement. Panic shot through me. Shit! I yanked the wheel, but it was no use. August, watch out! Colin's voice was sharp, but before I could react, the car lurched sideways, and then, bam! We hit the tree. Hard. The sound of metal crunching filled the air, and the impact jolted me forward. The airbags exploded in front of us, and everything blurred for a second, like the world had hit pause. The next thing I remembered was seeing Colin slumped against the airbag, his head tilted at a weird angle, blood trickling down his forehead. Colin! I shouted, panic surging through me as I reached over and shook him. Hey, wake up! Come on, babe, please. He didn't move. I don't remember for how long I tried to wake him up before finally dialing 911. The next thing I knew, they were strapping him onto the stretcher, taking him in the ambulance. I climbed in after them, refusing to let him out of my sight. As the ambulance sped toward the hospital, I couldn't stop shaking. I held his hand the whole way, whispering to him even though I knew he couldn't hear me. Please, Colin. Please be okay. I'm so sorry. The sirens wailed around us, but... All I could focus on was Colin's pale face and the way everything had gone so horribly wrong in a matter of seconds. Flashback ends. Back to the present day. I swallowed hard and smiled, trying to play it cool. No, sorry, I just... I paused, then blurted out the first thing that came to my mind. You're beautiful. Colin blinked, his eyebrows shooting up. What? Crap, too much, too soon. I mean, you just caught my eye. You look, I don't know, like... Someone worth knowing, I stammered, rubbing the back of my neck. This was going downhill fast. Uh, would you maybe want to grab a coffee with me? There's a place nearby that's pretty good. He looked me up and down, probably trying to figure out if I was some kind of weirdo. After what felt like an eternity, he broke into a smile. Sure, why not? I exhaled in relief, trying not to show how shocked I was that he'd say yes. Great, follow me. As we walked to the coffee shop, I kept stealing glances at him. He looked the same and acted the same, but everything felt different. I wanted to ask him a million questions, but I kept my mouth shut, not wanting to scare him off. So, Colin said after a minute of silence, do you ask random strangers out for coffee a lot? I chuckled awkwardly. Not really, just when I feel like I shouldn't let the chance slip by. Huh, he glanced at me again, something unreadable in his expression. Bold move. Bold. Right. If only he knew how terrified I was. I could feel my hands starting to sweat. Yeah, well, life's short, right? Guess so. When we got to the coffee shop, I held the door open for him. 
He walked in and looked around. Nice place. You come here a lot? You could say that. I tried to keep my tone light, even though the memories were hitting me hard. This was our spot, where we had our first date, where we'd come countless times over the years. But to him, it was just another coffee shop. We sat together. I was too happy to be here to control my tongue. As the waiter came, like a muscle memory, I ordered his usual order, white chocolate mocha, which was so ingrained in me that I could order it in my sleep. Before I could realize what I had done, he looked up at me surprised. How'd you know that I like it? He asked, raising an eyebrow. I froze for a second. Uh, lucky guess? He gave me a curious look, clearly not buying it. We sipped our coffees in silence for a while and talked about everything and nothing. I wanted so badly to reach across the table, grab his hand, and tell him everything. But I couldn't. Not yet. So, he said slowly, do you do this a lot? What do you mean? I asked, even though I had a feeling I knew where this was going. Ask strangers out for coffee. Guess their coffee orders, he said, his lips twitching like he was holding back a smile. I scratched the back of my neck, feeling a little embarrassed. Honestly, no, I don't do this at all. He raised an eyebrow. Then why me? I bit my lip, unsure how to answer that without giving everything away. I don't know, I just felt like I had to. Colin didn't say anything for a moment, then he smiled. A small, almost shy smile that made my chest tighten. Well, I'm glad you did. My heart skipped a beat. It wasn't much, but it felt like a step forward. Like maybe there was still a connection there, even if he couldn't remember it. The conversation drifted to lighter topics after that. We talked about movies, music, and random stuff that didn't matter, but filled the space between us. Every now and then, he'd laugh or smile, and for a moment, it felt like old times, like maybe things could go back to the way they were. But then reality would creep back in, and I'd remember that he didn't know me. Not really. After a while, Colin glanced at his watch and sighed. I should get going. This was nice, though. Yeah, I said, forcing a smile, even though I didn't want it to end. I had a great time. He stood up, grabbing his jacket. Hey, maybe we can do this again sometime. I mean, if you're up for it. I blinked, caught off guard. Yeah, definitely, I'd like that. Cool, he said, pulling out his phone. Let's exchange numbers. I gave him mine, still trying to process the fact that he wanted to see me again. As we stood there awkwardly in the doorway, I couldn't help but feel a flicker of hope. Maybe this could work. Maybe with time, he'd remember. See you soon, August, he said with a small smile before turning and walking away. I watched him disappear into the crowd, my heart a mess of emotions. He may not remember me now, but I wasn't giving up. Not yet. Three days later, I could only thank the gods that for some reason Colin didn't think of me as a creep, but instead considered me decent enough to talk, and by talk I mean talk a lot. We had been chatting almost non-stop, till late night, like a couple of teenagers who had just had their first crush, before I finally decided to ask him out again. How could I not bring him here? This was the first place we visited together after we officially became a couple. Maybe, just maybe, like old times, this place will do its magic one more time. Wow, this place is beautiful, Colin said, looking around with wide eyes. I don't think I've ever been here before. I grinned. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? I've had some of my best memories here. How about we start with the giant roller coaster? Sure thing, Colin said, his excitement matching mine. As we stood in line, the excitement in the air was palpable. We talked about random things while waiting, and Colin seemed genuinely interested in everything around him. When it was finally our turn, we climbed aboard the roller coaster. The ride was a blast, screaming, laughing, and holding on as we whipped around the track. Colin's laughter was contagious, and for a moment it felt like we were reliving our old adventures. That was amazing, Colin said, catching his breath as we got off. I can't believe I've never done this before. I nodded, trying to keep my smile genuine. Yeah, it's one of the best rides here. I'm glad you enjoyed it. We spent the day hopping from ride to ride, each new thrill bringing a fresh burst of joy. Colin was having a great time, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was missing. Despite his enthusiasm, there was no hint of recognition in his eyes. Thanks for bringing me here, Colin said as we took a breath for cotton candy. Today has been fantastic. I'm glad you think so, I replied feeling a mix of happiness and disappointment. I had a great time too. As the day wound down and we left the park, I couldn't help but feel a tinge of sadness. Colin was enjoying himself, but it wasn't the same as it used to be. Do you want to come back sometime? I asked, trying to keep my voice upbeat. I'd love to, Colin said, giving me a warm smile. Let's definitely do this again. The next week. The top of the mountain offered a breathtaking view. I hoped that being here where Colin had proposed after we decided not to get our Vegas marriage annulled just to make it official, so I thought maybe this place would light something up in him, hoping it might bring back some memories. 
We arrived and took in the stunning view of the city below. Wahoo! Colin said, looking out with awe. I didn't know the city had any such spots. The view is stunning. It's perfect, isn't it? I said, trying to sound casual. Colin nodded. It seems like the perfect spot to propose to someone. If I had to, I'd do it here, he said, lost in his thoughts. I was taken aback. Did his memory click? Did he remember something? I guess my surprise must have been clear on my face, because as I looked at Colin slightly wide-eyed, he said, Oh my god, I, I'm not hinting at anything. I just thought the place was beautiful. Nothing else. God, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so sorry. My hopes were once again shattered, but what could I do except go on? It's all right. The place really is pretty. I see what you mean, I replied, smiling. We wandered around taking photos and enjoying the scenery. After a while, as we made our way back down, Colin was holding my hand. Even though he didn't remember anything, this wasn't so bad either. Two weeks later. It was stupid, maybe a bit too much, but I had to try. So one day, I decided to take him back where it all started and text him out of the blue. Want to run away from here and go to Vegas? Luckily and shockingly, he agreed. The rooftop in Vegas was a sight to behold. With the city lights sparkling below us, I hoped that being here, where I had once proposed drunkenly, where it all started for us, might spark something for Colin. It's so peaceful here, Colin said, taking in the view. I never expected to find such a quiet spot in Vegas. Someone very special to me helped me find it once. It's one of the best spots in the city, I said, trying to keep my tone light. Colin looked at me with interest. I didn't know you had someone special. You've been keeping secrets from me, honey? He said, feigning hurt, clearly teasing me. I laughed. It was clear even this place didn't remind him much. I wondered for a moment if I should tell him that he is the special one I'm talking about, but quickly decided against it. We spent the evening enjoying the view and talking about everything and nothing. I then lost hope from this place and simply decided to visit some of the other spots in Vegas and have fun. This has been a great trip, Colin said as we headed back. You really know how to make life worth living. Thanks for bringing me up here. See you around. I just smiled, not knowing how to tell him it was him who taught me to live again. A week later, the art museum was quiet and elegant, and I led Colin to the gallery where we had first connected over the invisible string picture. I hoped that seeing it again might spark something for him, or at least confirm that he is still the same Colin. I knowingly went and stopped at the painting. What are you looking at? You like this piece? Colin said, looking at the invisible string. Yeah, don't you? It's really a unique piece, I replied. It's one of those things that sticks with you. Colin nodded, taking in the painting. It's nice, but I can't see why it might be special. I was taken aback by his comment. How can someone change so much? I got he didn't remember me, but how can someone's whole ideology change? I still pushed the conversation, quoting him from the last time. I think it very well delivers the idea that there's someone out there who's meant for you, and when you find them, it just clicks. Everything makes sense. Maybe. I don't know. Sounds like a fantasy to me. Wishful thinking, perhaps. I could say nothing more. We wandered through the museum discussing various pieces, but there was no hint of him remembering anything at all when it came to the painting. Colin seemed to enjoy the museum, but the connection I had hoped for wasn't there. Maybe I was fighting a lost battle. Maybe he was truly gone. Five days later. I hadn't been much in contact with Colin since our museum date. I was heading home after a long day and just wanting to kick back and relax. The sun had set and the streetlights were flickering to life. I turned a corner and saw Colin standing outside a bar talking to a man. At first, I didn't think much of it. Colin was pretty sociable. But as I got closer, I noticed something that made my heart sink. The man was leaning in a bit too close, and Colin was laughing, his eyes bright. They were standing very close to each other, almost touching. The man had his hand on Colin's shoulder, and they were sharing a look that felt too intimate for my comfort. Maybe I was thinking too much. Maybe they were just talking, but it doesn't change the fact that Colin was clearly enjoying the conversation. Way too much for my liking. His smile warm and relaxed, as it should only be with me. I felt a jolt of jealousy and then a wave of disappointment. It was like being punched in the gut. Colin and this man were sharing a moment that felt personal, and it hit me hard. I felt like an outsider, watching a version of Colin that I didn't know, and it hurt to think that maybe he was moving on, building new connections that I wasn't a part of. I stopped a few steps away, trying to stay hidden, behind a nearby street lamp. I wanted to approach, to interrupt, but my feet felt like they were glued to the ground. Seeing Colin so engaged with someone else made it feel like the Colin I loved was slipping away, replaced by someone who didn't remember me or our life together. It was clear that Colin was moving on in ways I couldn't fully grasp, and the thought of losing him to a version of himself that didn't remember our past was almost too much to bear. Three weeks later, 
I had been avoiding Colin for a few days now. Not intentionally, well, maybe a little intentionally, but it was easier to put some space between us than face the constant reminder that he wasn't the same person he used to be. I didn't want to admit how much it hurt to see him to be reminded of what we lost, but that didn't stop Colin from trying to reach out. One afternoon, my phone buzzed, and it was Colin calling. I hesitated for a moment, staring at his name on the screen before I finally answered. Hey, I said trying to sound casual. August, Colin's voice was warm, but there was a hint of something else. Nervousness? I was wondering if you wanted to hang out today. I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. I bit my lip, debating how to respond. It wasn't that I didn't want to see him, I just wasn't sure I could handle it. But I couldn't keep avoiding him forever. Yeah, I guess I've been kind of busy, I said trying to keep my tone light. But sure, we can hang out. Colin seemed to perk up at that. Great! How about we meet at the park? It's a nice day, and I thought we could grab some ice cream or something. I agreed, and about an hour later we met up near the park. Colin was already waiting for me when I got there, leaning against a tree with a smile on his face. When he saw me approaching, his smile widened and he waved. Hey, he said brightly. I'm glad you came. Yeah, me too, I replied, though my voice didn't carry the same enthusiasm. I felt a little on edge, unsure of how this meeting would go. We walked side by side toward the ice cream stand, making small talk about the weather and random things we'd been up to. But I could tell Colin was holding something back, like there was something on his mind. Once we had our ice cream and found a bench to sit on, Colin turned to me, his expression more serious now. He took a deep breath, then exhaled slowly, as if gathering his thoughts. August, he started, his voice softer than before. I've been feeling like, like maybe I've done something wrong. I glanced at him, my heart skipping a beat. What do you mean? He looked down at his ice cream for a moment before meeting my eyes again. It's just, I feel like you've been avoiding me lately, and if I've done something to upset you, I want to fix it. I just, I don't know what it is. His sincerity hit me hard, and for a second, I didn't know what to say. I had been avoiding him, but not because of anything he did. It was just hard to be around him, hard to pretend like everything was okay when inside I was struggling. Before I could respond, Colin suddenly reached out and cupped my face in his hands, gently tilting my head so that I was looking directly into his eyes. His touch was warm and familiar, and for a brief moment, I felt a flicker of hope ignite again in my chest. This was something he used to do all the time, whenever he apologized, whenever he was trying to comfort me. It was our thing. I'm really sorry, Colin said, his voice soft and full of sincerity. Whatever I did, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. For a second, I just stared at him, frozen in place by the sudden rush of memories. But then... Almost as quickly as it happened, Colin blinked in surprise and let go of my face, pulling his hands back as if he had been burned. Oh God, I, uh, I'm sorry, he stammered, his cheeks flushing red. I don't know why I did that. It's just, I don't know, felt like a reflex or something. I forced a laugh, trying to keep things light, even though my heart was racing. It's okay, really. Colin still looked embarrassed, rubbing the back of his neck awkwardly. That was weird, right? Sorry, I didn't mean to make things awkward. It wasn't weird, I assured him, though my mind was reeling. That small gesture had been so natural, so automatic, like a muscle memory from before he lost everything. It was a glimpse of the old Colin, the one I had loved for so long. But I couldn't let myself get too hopeful. Not yet. I had been down this road before, letting myself believe that maybe, just maybe, something would trigger his memory, and each time, I had been disappointed. I couldn't go through that again. I'm really glad I could see you today, he said after a while. I've missed hanging out with you. I've missed it too, I admitted quietly. And I had. Despite everything, being around Colin still felt right. Even if he didn't remember our past, I couldn't deny that the connection between us was still there. It wasn't the same, but it wasn't gone either. As we got up to leave, Colin smiled at me, that same warm smile that had always made my heart skip a beat. Let's not wait so long to hang out again, okay? I nodded, feeling a bit lighter than I had in days. Okay. Maybe things weren't perfect, but for now, this small moment of connection was enough. A few weeks later. It had been a few weeks since the park incident, where Colin had cut my face in his hands like he used to, a muscle memory from our past life together. I'd been keeping things casual, trying not to get too caught up in the little moments that seemed to bring the old Colin back. But it was hard. Every time we hung out, I couldn't help but look for signs of recognition, waiting for him to remember something, anything about us. We had just finished dinner at a small Italian place downtown. It was one of Colin's favorites, or at least it used to be. I had suggested it without saying why, out of my usual hope, but he didn't mention anything, 
just enjoyed his meal with a relaxed smile, completely unaware that we had shared countless dinners here before. As we walked back to my place, Colin suddenly stopped in front of a small florist shop. The window was filled with bright, colorful flowers, and Colin seemed to be mesmerized by the sight of them. Hold on a sec, he said, breaking away from me and heading inside the shop. I waited outside, leaning against the wall and wondering what he was up to. A few minutes later, Colin came back out, holding a small bouquet of flowers. He had a shy smile on his face as he walked back over to me. Here, he said, handing the bouquet to me. These are for you. I blinked, staring down at the flowers in my hands. They were a mix of lilies and daisies, nothing too fancy, but they were perfect. The gesture caught me completely off guard. Colin, I said softly looking up at him. You didn't have to. I know, he interrupted, rubbing the back of his neck awkwardly, but I wanted to. I don't know, it just felt like the right thing to do. You've been so great, and I just wanted to do something nice for you. I swallowed hard, feeling a lump form in my throat. He didn't know, he didn't remember, that flowers had always been his thing. He used to bring them to me all the time, for no reason other than to make me smile. It was one of those small, thoughtful gestures that I had loved so much about him, and here he was doing it again without even realizing it. Thank you, I said my voice barely above a whisper. I wasn't sure if he could tell how much it meant to me, but I hoped my smile would say it all. Colin grinned, looking relieved that I liked them. I'm glad you liked them. I was worried it might be too cheesy or something. Not at all, I said, shaking my head. It's perfect. We continued walking to my home, hand in hand, smiling. Maybe he was even blushing. As we reached my building, Colin hesitated at the entrance. He shifted from foot to foot, looking a little unsure of himself. Hey, um, he started, his voice a bit uncertain. I've had a really good time today. I just wanted you to know that. I smiled at him, trying to keep my emotions in check. Me too. He took a deep breath, then stepped forward and gave me a quick hug. It wasn't much, just a brief embrace, but... It was enough to make my heart race. When he pulled back, he looked into my eyes for a moment as if he was searching for something. Good night, August, he said softly before turning to leave. I watched him walk away, the flowers still clutched in my hands. I knew I shouldn't get my hopes up, but moments like these made it hard not to. Maybe he didn't remember our past, but there were pieces of that old Colin that were still there, buried deep inside, and for now, that was enough to keep me going. Four days later, a few days later, Colin texted me asking if I wanted to come over to his place for dinner. He said he wanted to try cooking something special, and I figured it would be a nice change from our usual routine of going out to eat. When I arrived, Colin greeted me with a wide smile, looking more excited than I'd seen him in a while. Hey, he said, pulling me into a quick hug. I hope you're hungry because I've been working on this all afternoon. I chuckled, stepping inside and catching a whiff of something delicious cooking in the kitchen. You've got me curious now. What's on the menu? Colin grinned, his eyes twinkling with excitement. I'm not telling. You'll have to wait and see. I followed him into the kitchen, where he had the table set up with candles and everything. It was a small, cozy setup, but the effort he had put into it was obvious. I couldn't help but smile at how thoughtful he was being. We sat down to eat, and Colin proudly presented a homemade lasagna. God, how I missed his cooking. As we dug in, we fell into easy conversation talking about work and random stories and laughing more than we had in a while. It felt nice and comfortable, and for a moment, I let myself forget about everything else. After dinner, Colin suggested we listen to some music while we cleaned up. He handed me his phone and asked me to pick up something. I scrolled through his playlist, but one song caught my eye. Our song. It was the one we had danced to at our wedding. The one we had with our families after we officially announced our marriage to them a slow, romantic tune that we had both loved. I hesitated for a moment, debating whether or not to play it, but in the end, I couldn't resist. I pressed play, and the familiar melody filled the room. Colin paused mid-cleanup, his brow furrowing slightly as the song began to play. He looked over at me, a hint of confusion in his eyes. This song, he said slowly as if trying to place it, it feels familiar. My heart skipped a beat, and I watched him closely, wondering if this was it, if this was the moment he would remember. But after a few seconds, he just shrugged and smiled. It's a good song, he said, walking over to me. Do you like it? Yeah, I replied softly. It's one of my favorites. Without thinking, Colin held out his hand. Dance with me? I blinked in surprise, but I didn't hesitate. I took his hand and he pulled me close, wrapping his arms around me as we swayed to the music. It felt so familiar, so right, like we had done this a million times before. And we had. As we danced... I felt the sting of tears in my eyes, but 
I blinked them away, refusing to let myself get emotional. This was just a dance, just a song. I couldn't let myself believe it was more than that. But then Colin did something that nearly broke me. He leaned down and rested his forehead against mine, his breath warm on my skin. It was something he used to do all the time, a small gesture of comfort and love. And as he did it now, it was like my heart shattered and healed all at once. I don't know why, Colin whispered, his voice barely audible, but this feels right. I closed my eyes, letting myself savor the moment, even though I knew it couldn't last. Yeah, I whispered back. It does. We continued to dance, wrapped up in the music and each other. For that brief moment, it felt like everything was the way it used to be, like Colin was still mine and nothing had changed. Two weeks later. It had been a few weeks since our last dance, and things between Colin and me had been good. Almost too good. We were hanging out more often, laughing, going on dates, like we were a brand new couple. It was everything I wanted, yet a part of me was always on edge, waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for Colin to either remember everything or realize that something was missing and walk away. I wasn't sure which scared me more. Then one night Colin asked me to meet him at the mountaintop he had proposed to me years ago. He didn't know that, of course. To him, it was just another cool spot with a great view. To me, it was a place filled with memories. When I arrived, Colin was already there, looking out over the city. The wind ruffled his black hair, and he looked as handsome as ever. He turned when he heard me approach, a small nervous smile on his face. Hey, he said softly, stepping toward me. Hey, I replied, my heart pounding in my chest. Something about the way he was acting had me on edge, but I couldn't quite figure out why. I'm glad you came, Colin said, fidgeting with his hands. I've been thinking a lot lately, and, well, there's something I want to talk to you about. My stomach twisted with nerves. Okay, I said cautiously. What is it? Colin took a deep breath then reached into his pocket and pulled out a small, familiar velvet box. My heart nearly stopped. He opened it to reveal a simple yet elegant ring. I know this might seem crazy, Colin began, his voice trembling slightly, but I love you, August. I don't know how or why, but I do. I know it must feel so sudden, so rushed, but I've never felt this for anyone ever before, the way I feel for you, and I can't shake this feeling that we're meant to be together. So I'm asking you, will you marry me? Tears instantly welled up in my eyes as I stared at the ring. My mind raced, torn between the joy of the moment and the heavy weight of the truth that I had been hiding. I couldn't let him propose without telling him everything. He deserved to know. Colin, I whispered, my voice shaky. There's something I need to tell you first. He blinked, confusion crossing his face. What is it? I took a deep breath, steadying myself for what I had to say. We've already been married for eight years. Colin's eyes widened in shock, his hand dropping slightly as he stared at me, speechless. I pushed forward before I could lose the courage to continue. We were married for eight years and everything was perfect. You were the love of my life, and I thought nothing could ever tear us apart, I said my voice thick with emotion. But then, there was the accident. The accident? The one I had? How do you know about it? Colin asked, his voice soft and disbelieving. I nodded, tears spilling down my cheeks. I know everything about you, Colin, down to the tiniest detail. It was a week before our eighth anniversary. We were out celebrating your promotion, and I had a few too many drinks, but I was stubborn, and I thought I could drive us home. My voice caught in my throat as the memories of that night flashed in my mind. I took a wrong turn and hit a tree. You... you were hurt worse than I was. You lost your memory because of me. Colin just stood there, staring at me as if trying to process everything. I continued, needing him to know the truth. When you woke up in the hospital, you didn't remember anything. I came in front of you, but you didn't even register me. You didn't even know who I was, and I didn't want you to feel trapped in a life you couldn't remember, so I asked our families not to tell you anything. I thought maybe, just maybe, if I gave you the space to rediscover yourself, you'd remember on your own. I didn't want you to be in a forced relationship with someone you didn't even know. Colin's eyes filled with tears as I spoke. I wiped my face, feeling the weight of the secret I'd been carrying for so long finally lift, though it was replaced with fear of what Colin would do now that he knew. I'm so sorry, I whispered, my voice breaking. I didn't mean for any of this to happen, but now that you know, if you don't want to be with me, I'll understand. I just... I had to tell you the truth. For a few agonizing moments, Colin was silent, his face unreadable. Then, without warning, he stepped forward and pulled me into his arms, holding me tightly. I could feel his body trembling, and I realized he was crying too. August, he choked out, muffled against my shoulder. I knew. I always knew there was more to us. I could feel it, even if I couldn't remember. And now that you've told me, I just love you even more. 
I pulled back slightly to look at him, my heart pounding in my chest. Colin! He cupped my face in his hands, his thumbs brushing away my tears, just like he used to do before the accident. His dark eyes were filled with emotion as he looked into mine. I would choose you a thousand times over, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. Memory or no memory, it doesn't change how I feel about you. I love you, August, and I want to make up for all the time we've lost, so please, will you let me? I let out a shaky laugh, tears streaming down my face as I nodded. Of course, I whispered. Of course I will. Colin smiled through his tears, and then he dropped down to one knee, holding the ring up to me once more. Then let's do this right, he said, his voice steadier now. Will you marry me again? Yes, I said softly, my voice filled with all the love I had for him. Yes, I'll marry you. Colin slipped the ring onto my finger, and then he stood up and pulled me into another kiss. It was soft and sweet, filled with promises of a new beginning. As we stood there on the rooftop with the city lights twinkling around us, I realized that maybe it didn't matter if Colin never fully remembered our past, because here, in this moment, we were creating something new, something even more beautiful than before. And that was more than enough for me. Conclusion After Colin proposed, we decided to start fresh together. We didn't rush to recover what was lost, but instead we focused on building new memories. Colin never regained his memory, but that didn't matter anymore. We were happy, laughing, loving, and living each day as if it was a gift. Our families were thrilled to see us back together, and in time, we even had a small wedding ceremony to mark our new beginning. Of course it felt like his first to Colin. It wasn't perfect, but it was ours. And for the first time in a long time, I felt like everything was going to be okay. The End Have you ever fallen for the same person twice? Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force. And stay wholesome.